Thank you for joining our data governance demo session. My name is Imani Pant. I'm a consultant at Arakama, and I will be showing you what our data governance suite has to offer. Hello and welcome to the Arakama One data governance suite demo. We are starting with the knowledge catalog, which is a one-stop solution to gain visibility and give you an in-depth understanding of your data as well as your metadata. Arakama One helps you get a complete picture of your data landscape. From understanding contents and quality to assigning business terms and generating statistics to detecting anomalies and sending notifications to data stewards. Arakama One uses AI and active metadata to automate many tedious data governance tasks. The first step to populating a data catalog is connecting to a data source. So any database that has a JDBC driver, data warehouses, data lakes, or if your data sits in an S3 bucket or a big data cluster, then we can connect to these as well. After you have established a connection to your data source, there are three ways in which you can catalog the data inside. The first option is to import all the available metadata from the data source without analyzing the data. This will import uh, your schemas, and tables, um, attributes, and so on. Or you can run the data discovery process. And with this option, a sample of the data from all the entities in the data source will be profiled. So this will let you see basic statistics about your data, view data lineage and relationship between entities, and preview the data itself, all from the data catalog. The last option is the most comprehensive one. We call it documenting the data source. And with this option, we run profiling on all of your data. This gives us much more accurate outputs. And this option also calculates data quality for all data automatically where possible. After the data catalog is populated with data entities, the information will stay up to date automatically as data changes over time. Now, Let's look at search, one of the most important features of any data catalog. And there's several ways in which you can find the right data set in Arakama One. With these predefined filters, you can filter catalog items by various attributes. So for example, I'm interested only in high data quality for my analysis. Or you can find the most up-to-date data assets with this filter. You can also easily create a sample of the relevant data by filtering by the business term. So for example, I'm interested in contacts data. And then of course, you can just type what you're interested into the search bar. For example, I'm looking for data sets that contain emails. And then the most advanced search style is composing complex queries to, to find exactly what you need. So I can say attributes count is greater than 10. And this will give me a list of all those catalog items which have more than 10 attributes in them. Now, let's have a look at the data set that we might find interesting. And let's open this customer table here. At a first glance, we see the list of data attributes. Also in this particular case, we have some business term suggestions generated by our AI. Over here, we have some more business terms that characterize this whole data set. And we will talk more about business glossary later on. There is some technical metadata, which has been imported from the data source and a business description added by the users. You also can then view the different relations that this data set has with other data sets. So customer table here is a parent of payments and order, is a child of employee table, and has a derived relationship with the email marketing table. You can also create 
and establish different relationship types and this therefore fully configurable. And then you can also check the aggregated data quality for this data asset as well as some other details. Most of this metadata has been captured or generated by Arakama One automatically. And I think it's also worth mentioning and noting that this screen is configurable. So you can decide to add some of your own metadata here or even change the layout. Now, let's look at the data sample. And here we see a sample of 50 records to give you a better understanding of what's really inside this data set. Of course, if the data source contains sensitive data, then the data sampling can be turned off. Someone technical might be interested in the metadata, so the data structure itself. And as data structures implement the physical form of the data type, you can view constraints as well as indices. Later on, you can apply structural checks as well, which particularly can be useful if your data source is not that stable in terms of structural integrity. So attributes could go missing or new attributes are coming in on a frequent basis. You can configure all of this up in our metadata, metadata model itself. Next, you can view relationship between different entities, how customer is a parent to the payments table and email marketing table is derived from it. You can filter using terms, validity, and another interesting feature of the platform called Anomaly Inspector. So let's go to the amount attribute of the payment table to understand this further. What's happened is that Atacama One detected unexpected values in several statistics. And what we can do now is either accept this anomaly or reject it if these values are expected. Either way, this will train our AI to make anomaly detection more precise. Let's have a look at another useful feature to understand your data. Profiling can be generated for every data asset automatically, depending on your settings. It is a simple but powerful feature that lets anyone quickly understand what's inside their data. Whether you're a data scientist looking for the right data for analysis or a master data developer working on the master model and trying to understand discrepancies in various data sets that need to be matched. For each of these attributes, we can see the count of distinct, unique, and not null values, along with suggested glossary terms. You can also do a drill through at an attribute level and analyze your data even further. You can also schedule profiling based on your requirement, or we can perform the same manually and view the different versions of the profiled data set as well. Moving on, you can view the aggregated information about data quality for this data set. So how many records have been addressed in the evaluation process? Which all checks have been applied on the attributes that you're interested in monitoring? And we will dive deeper into data quality in the next session. Data lineage is another type of critical feature for modern data catalogs. And in Arakama One, it's generated automatically. To make lineage useful for um, a large group of users, we've added business overlays, such as business terms, data quality, and anomalies. This way, you can track data quality deterioration or anomalies to a specific source, or get more context around the business term that interests you and find the best data set that suits your needs. It is also possible to import lineage from other tools. So to summarize what we've seen so far, Arakama One automates data cataloging or data source documentation like no other tool on the market. We bring data quality, data lineage, data profiling, 
relationship discovery, anomaly detection, under a single roof for a next generation experience. And speaking of automation, let's switch gears and talk about the business glossary and its part in it. Business glossary is the repository for domains or terms or business dictionary. So all of your metadata, even though they hold different types of information. Domains or terms are data dictionaries that are embedded in a tool for different types of data. Through this comprehensive list, you can validate the values existing in a column. For example, elements of contact, such as phone number and email, which is sensitive data and needs to be classified accordingly. Within the business glossary, you can manage terms of different types. So this could be business terms, which are assigned to the data based on the set conditions. Could be technical terms, uh, which are data types and other technical descriptors for your data. They are automatically assigned to the, to the data during profiling together with the business terms. And you can create any other term type um, as custom created terms. In our case, key performance uh, indicators and security terms here are the custom ones. Overall, a good business glossary helps to understand and organize your data. Now, you have different modes to view the terms, such as flat listing, which is um, a list of all the available terms parent of, child of, and, and so on. You can leverage these out of the box terms available here based on your requirement and also create your own new terms. It's also worth mentioning that you can import the terms that are sane and excel into the platform, which saves you the effort to create everything from scratch manually. Let's take a look at an email term. Both the screen layout and the information that is visible here are highly customizable. We see some general information about the term is available and the relation it has with the other terms. So you can build your own hierarchies between different terms, thereby facilitating a more meaningful arrangement and sequencing of business terms. Now let's take a look at how we can automate the mapping of business terms to data entities in Atacama One. One way is rule-based mapping or detection. This means we create a rule like this. In this case, we're checking the data against this condition. And if 32% of the values in the column satisfy this condition, we map this business term to the attribute. Another useful way is to automate the mapping of the business term by using AI. And it's as easy as ticking this checkbox. So when this option is enabled, anytime someone adds this business term manually, our AI will analyze the underlying data and suggest adding this term to similar attributes. So this is a great feature that will um, you know, quickly tag any new data source with relevant business terms or any existing data assets in the data catalog, which are not tagged. And the last piece that I'd like to demonstrate here is the automation of data quality via business terms. So what this part does is that it lets you map specific data quality rules to the business term. And they could check the validity, uh, completeness, uniqueness, accuracy, and uh, you know, any other dimension if you want. So if an attribute in a data set is tagged with this business term, then Arakama One will automatically run these configured checks and calculate data quality. And if we switch to data quality tab, we will see the aggregated data quality for all data in the data catalog tagged with email. Again, more of this in the data quality demo, which will take place after this one. 
Moving on, term occurrences is a powerful, powerful feature where you get to know which sources, catalog items, and attributes this business term is assigned or has been detected. And this feature will let you easily prepare reports about where, for example, sensitive data resides. Also, it's worth noting that any changes made to an asset, so whether you edit something in the catalog or you're adding a new term, needs to be approved by the owner of the asset, which is by default the user with admin privileges. So whenever an asset has been updated, in our case, this email term, changes are visible only to the user who modified it. The asset then remains in the draft state until it is approved and then finally published. Now, requests can be viewed and tracked at any time. So you can view all the requests, including the canceled ones, as well as the requests that are waiting for your approval or are unresolved. In Atacama 1, you can also use business terms to define data policies. This helps to document policies consistently and tie them to specific domains. And policies, of course, are an important part of any data governance program. In the platform, you can document your own regulations and how users will get access to the data and metadata. Let's take GDPR as an example for which there is some general information about the regulation itself. And you can define different types of policies that are somehow restricting access to sensitive information. So you can create your own policies. You're also able to easily relate the policies to the content of the data. So for example, say that access should be based on the type of the content. Whenever a, time, a term assigned to an asset is personal data, then apply this for everyone except these rules, which can be fetched from your LDAP or Active Directory. So you can document your policies and in the later versions of the platform, we will add the ability to enforce the policies automatically on the fly. So whenever a user is accessing the data catalog or say retrieving the underlying data. And this concludes our demo for today. To summarize, Atacama One Data Governance Suite lets you effortlessly catalog your data build business glossary, automate data classification and data quality, and document data policies. Thank you for your attention.